Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to episode 2 of my renovation series slash moving vlogs. Obviously we moved into this house probably, was it back in October? It was back in October, so we've been here a while, we're well underway with the renovations. If you missed the first episode which was pretty much the demolition of the top two floors, I say demolition, we still have four walls. However, we basically took everything back to brick. So a big transformation over on that first episode. If you missed it, I'll leave it linked below if you wanted to watch that one first. As for today's episode, it's been a while. It's been slow, I'm not gonna lie, it's been real slow progress, really of no fault of our own, but more waiting on delivery, supply and demand at the moment in this industry is pretty chaotic. If you are also renovating, or if you're in the building industry, or if you know of someone who is, you'll probably be aware of the wait times for a lot of things has basically delayed us quite a bit in terms of we've had people booked in to do the work however the delivery date of a lot of things has been a little bit delayed so that's meant pushing things back we then get the delivery but then the people we have booked in we've missed our slots then we have to book them in for a week's time so it's just a vicious circle basically of supply and demand causing us a bit of delay with that being said we're not being too precious about everything basically we have this front room which we're using as our bedroom we have the other room which we're using as our living room and kitchen area we've obviously got the outside area the garden space downstairs loo we still are obviously without a bathroom which is a bit of an issue but it's not been too bad in the grand scheme of things by using the gym, which is literally a couple of minutes drive. It's not been the worst, you know, like we're, we're coping. I'm just thankful that gyms are open because if they weren't open, it would definitely be a different story. So just a quick update, we're doing the top two floors whilst living out of downstairs. Then once the top two floors are done, we will move upstairs and basically start on the downstairs extension and basement, which will be the biggest project really. So with those two, we're probably going to have more hands on deck and people booked in for a good solid chunk of time. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling and show you some clips so you can see the progress we've made so far and I hope you guys enjoy. The first thing that we had to do was replace some of the floorboards. The reason being we had to re repair some of the joists because they'd come away, you'll be able to see underneath, they had been replaced just a couple of them so that they actually met the wall. And then we had the metal brackets started to be put onto the wall, ready for the metal dry lining to be done, which is essentially the method that we've gone for to help re-insulate both the ceiling and all the walls. And it will also allow us to run all the wires behind them. Then we had sandblasters in, so we taped up all the doors and also just used some old bedding to kind of protect the windows for the room that we're actually using as our front room. Tea towels, damp tea towels was a massive saviour for us because it helps pick up the product as well. So actually, after the sandblasting of the front of the house, this was in fairly good condition in that front room, just a little bit of hoovering. However, the upstairs was a different story. You'll be able to see the sand pit in a moment. With us being in a period property as well, the sandblasting allowed us to discover what was underneath the red paint. Barney didn't even seem bothered by the noise. What <laughs> This is honestly one of the hardest parts about living in a renovation, living in whilst doing the build, is the constant cleanup. It's dust everywhere. I do feel like we've got over the worst of it with the main kind of stripping everything back to brick, taking ceilings down. It was a dust cloud. Living in a dust cloud has been hard, but we've managed to make do and every single wall and ceiling is now lined, ready to be re-insulated and re -plasterboarded.
We also had some final bits finished off with the roofers. As you can see here, just a little overview of the re-slating of our roof. I did try and go up there on the ladders. However, it was a little too high for my liking. Now time for plumbers first fix. They were in for, I'd say just under a week and they were basically re-plumbing the entire of the top two floors, a whole new system, all new, brand new copper pipes to run through and just replace everything that was currently there. And that also meant that it was time for me to shop. So I went for Colebrook brushed brass finish for all the fixtures and fittings, which you will see later on. So we have had the plumbers start the first fix of plumbing using the copper piping so this room through here is the main bathroom We've just kind of been toying around and playing with different kind of setups and the way that we can have the bath the shower the sinks the towel rails to make it all work and actually in this room we are more than likely going to be doing underfloor heating and no towel rail to allow for a bath here like a freestanding bath with one of those brass taps I've ordered today actually, one of the um, like floor standing ones. And I was gonna hide it away in that corner, but they're that expensive <laughs> that I feel like you might as well have it on show. So we're gonna have the tap coming from here into the bath, which has like a shower head on it as well. And then the toilet, what, as you can see the waste pipe there, it was here. We're actually gonna move it so it's facing that way. So you kind of face the vanity and the sink area. That's what those taps have gone in for. Nice and centralized sink unit here with maybe some baskets underneath rather than a closed cupboard. So I've ordered the little brass um, filler tap or whatever it's called at the bottom so you can actually see it along with the brass hardware in the sink. This opening here will be the shower, which as you can see is quite deep. So we're gonna try and build a wall here so that we can have like an inbuilt shelving unit at the back and then we will do the um shower head coming out and a side like handheld shower along with some valves either here or this side so that you can turn on the shower without needing to go all the way back and do that like little arm stretch out so that your arm doesn't get wet and then this is the ensuite and here we've been playing around and toying with how we're going to do the setup because as you can tell it's plenty big enough for a bathroom but because of the like the layout of it the fact that it's quite long and narrow means that fitting in a door is going to be quite difficult you don't want to come in out into the bedroom because then it'll be against the bed going in is going to hit against the shower which will go here in this corner towel rail somewhere here and then toilet and sink on the back here so what we've thought about doing is having a door sliding so that we can have a door into the ensuite without needing to actually open it either inside or outside so that's the plan with this ensuite upstairs we are having radiators and we're going to go for like the cast iron style and we're going to have them like under the windows is the plan and then on the downstairs floor and the basement it will be under floor heating so we won't take up any space with radiators in there we were going to do a radiator like a vertical one for this corridor here against that wall or that one but i think the run it's a nice smooth run of paneling we'll keep that quite empty i quite like the idea of just having that as a blank wall so maybe a radiator here however having said that with a big radiator under there, that window, and the underfloor here, the radiators in there and the bathroom in there, it's and the underfloor coming, underfloor heating coming up from upstairs. We might not need a radiator. They're gonna work out the calculations, but this hallway might be all right without any radiators. So that's the plan to, if we can avoid having a radiator on the wall, we will. And then these are all the old wiring pipes that have had to come out, which, will be skipped soon enough. And that's pretty much the updates on the bathroom. Same with the upstairs in that they need to just wait until the stud walls have been built for these bits to be able to do the first fix. And then in a, about two weeks time, we're getting all new windows, which I'm so excited to get rid of these bars. I don't know what that's all about. These are the only windows, even in this room, there wasn't bars on that window, but these are the only window that had bars put on. So obviously these all, all will be coming out, the windows all being replaced, which is a shame really, because I love a sash window. They're just single glaze, we need to insulate, new heating system, 
new double glazed windows is all going to help with the energy efficiency in this house so after probably three days work the plumbers have done their first fix for now in terms of everything that they can do until we've done um, these walls and as you can see the piping there it's all very interesting and all very new to me but I'm learning as I go and then all these kind of hanging down wires and everything are for the electricians so they're in this week doing first fix as soon as they are done then next week we're gonna have the borders the dry liners come and actually put the plaster boards up so I think that is going to make a big difference once they go up and like these are re-insulated that you can see all the wiring going behind these and um, then we'll actually have walls so yes we'll have a bit of progress then we had this put up just to have this part of the wall rebuilt with these kind of like builders blocks just to make sure it is sturdy set and it ain't gonna budge and then also i'll show you up here as well so up here on the top floor we've decided that here we're going to have some kind of a pendant chandelier hanging down we think it'd be really nice and it'd frame that staircase really well so i've kind of been searching for fluted lighting like a kind of glass kind of fits with the traditional but it's also quite modern so that will go there with some spots throughout the rest of this room we're just going to have spotlights look at all these cables and this bathroom we are actually going to extend it a little bit more so once the dry liners come back they're going to just move this back a little bit so we've got a bit more room to maneuver with this being an our on suite and we had a delivery from plum base which is very exciting it's all of our um brushed brass hardware then fixtures that we've gone for for all three of the bathrooms the brand is colebrook and once they're all kind of set in place and being tested i'll show you guys what they look like in fact shall i just i'll just get one out and show you all right so here we are this is the what's this one Oh, this is one of the taps for the en suites. We've decided to go for both of these for both en suites. You see how it's a really nice kind of brushed finish. Nearly dropped it then. A like really brushed finish, kind of like almost antique style rather than a like real yellowy gold. So yeah, this is the one of the taps for the en suites, and then the one in the master bathroom is going to be coming from the wall. So there's like uh, two levers and then the tap that comes out from the wall we actually did a lot of online shopping last night which can get stressful the amount of websites you trawl through just to find a blooming toilet so toilets towel radiators we've bought all the radiators which is very exciting i've gone for two black in like a column so it's a traditional cast iron style but they're not actually cast iron managed to get two black one for my filming room one for the spare bedroom and then white in this loft and white in the master and then in the bathrooms the towel rails are going to be black I really wanted to do the bathrooms in like a micro cement finish it's expensive we got several quotes from different people and for the spaces that we're doing i.e quite small bathrooms it's honestly just not worth it we've got to do this entire house the extension the basement and if we've got to save in certain areas i feel like micro cement even though it's like a dream to have a beautiful micro cement bathroom I feel like maybe this isn't the house who knows maybe in the future however I think it's very unlikely so I think we're just going to tile but with like a really nice natural kind of stone tile so that's another thing we need to shop for we've got radiators we've got valves I've gone for like brush breast valves on the radiators as well towel rails a bath for the bathroom I've gone for like a in this brush brass brushed brass from Colebrook a floor tap in brushed brass god that's a tongue twister so i think that's going to be a really nice feature of the bathroom so a really small and simple deep freestanding bath that i've ordered for in there so many updates but i don't want to chit chat too much within these videos i want to keep them fairly non waffly if you know what i mean so anyway that's a little progress for what we've been doing this week we also had the builders come and rebuild this section of the wall here which was feeling a little flimsy i mean it's obviously just one bricks thinness and um this was getting a bit unsturdy so this has just really helped support and sturdy that up ready for the metal tracks to line this wall as well 
Then the electricians finished off their first fix by adding all their plug sockets, rewiring everything for where the light fixtures were going, the drop lights and also the light switches. We're happy with all the placements and ready for the plasterboards to arrive. We've also decided to make a start on the garden just with it being in the lead up to summer so I thought I would just document a little bit of a before. I say before we have already started so all of this area which was covered in shrubbery we've cut around this rose bush to keep this one. We've definitely discovered a few rose bushes in our garden which is nice so I think we're going to try and pot these and this as well oh my goodness this yellow rose has bloomed both of them have actually. This is the yellow rose i don't know if i told this story or not before but he this little guy here was the one that basically was a little hint for us to pick yellow collar of the litter which aka barney um this bloomed the day that we were picking from the litter and i was torn between a few pups but yellow was the heaviest, which is what I wanted, the lightest in colour. And also the name of him, the KC name, was going to be Nebraska Sunshine. So I just thought yellow rose has bloomed, yellow collar, let's go with it. So I definitely want to keep this rose bush if I can. So again, we're just going to kind of cut back all of this area, all of that area. Mow the lawn, we're going to do all that tomorrow as well. And then all of these shrubs here and along the side we're just going to try and cut back so we've got a nice big open space that we can use at least now for the summer and i think we'll keep this maple tree for now but in the future might move slash get rid i don't know i know that's going to be painful for a lot of you to hear but we just want to make this space exactly what we want it we're definitely keeping all of these huge trees but we're just going to trim them back getting rid of that again this whole shrubbery area is going to go there's a little hedgehog house out the back which i'll try and show you which again we want to keep just like a little man-made can you see it there little hedgehog shelter these little gaps in the fence uh why i've had a little like pen for barney to run around in but once we've cut all this back i can just put something temporarily against that and have him have a much bigger space to roam around in yet another Rose bush. So this one is pink. You can see the little tiny pink ones there and that dark pink one. There's actually a bud there that looks like it might pop open at some point. Look. But otherwise, all of this wilderness is going to be no longer. That whole bush or shrub there is going. And then these will keep, because I quite like fur, the fact that they're evergreens and they fast growing but fairly low maintenance in that the leaves don't drop or anything and um, we'll just trim these right back to as far as we can go because they're only going to grow back so all of that area as well so much more space to have once we've done all of that and yeah so this we have been making a start on already i'm just trying to take this green fencing up but the tent pegs because they've been in the ground that long they're really like stuck in there all this long grass look how long this grass is it's ridiculous all this grass has kind of grown over it so it's re been really hard to pull it up it's definitely not going to be a long-term garden landscape plan that's going to be pushed to one side but at least we'll have it for this summer to just have as a nice clear less wilderness space so as well as the plasterboards that are being delivered we've also got the insulation here which will go in between sort of the metal studs and the plasterboards so yeah we have a big delivery to unload upstairs look how tall that is oh god do we have to do it one at a time oh no i'll leave them to it oh sorry barney Oh, you're there. I thought you were behind the door. I thought you were behind the door. You are right, buddy? You're like, what's all this noise going on? Oh, that's a nice paw. Thank you. So we have had all of the garden like just cut back a lot of it all of this area though has been cut back which is just so much better because as you walk through here you can already straight away see into the garden. Barney! Come out of there! 
Can you see him? <laughs> we have taken up as, as well this rose bush and then all of this bit's been cut back. This bit's all kind of just been cleared up this whole area which just makes it so much more open and clean. And then obviously this area we've just had the grass cut back and that has made a world of difference. There is a little fence into the neighbours this side if you could if you can see through there there's a little like metal fence which he can't get over that so that's fine and that runs all the way along to the border of the fence back in there so if Barney does go in here there's there's nowhere really for him to go I'm just conscious that we don't know what's in there that's the only thing so I do try and keep my eyes on him he loves eating grass which is just great so this is heaven for him a freshly cut lawn he loves it, don't you? <laughs> it's your big garden now. So yeah, we are definitely going to try and keep the rose bushes. Of all, what have you got? He's got a plant pot. <laughs> We're going to try and keep all the rose bushes. This maple tree, is it a maple tree? I've been saying it's maple tree and Tom says it's not a maple tree, so I don't know what it is. Someone please tell me if it's not a maple tree and if so, what? it is i know so many of you are going to say no why would you get rid of it but i just want to i don't want it to hinder our plans to landscape this garden and if it's in the way it's in the way if it's not it's staying and that's that can we give a wave oh my goodness if you didn't understand that, he's wearing his Clithero cricket shirt. Oh, the pride. The pride. The lads all like that. Right, now I need to go on the hunt for some pots. We've just popped the rose bushes to make sure they're safe in some water in a bucket until I go and find some. Making huge progress in this garden. Oh my God, it just fell down on me. <laughs> And also, Tom reminded me it is not a maple tree. I knew it began with M. It's a magnolia. <laughs> that is what I meant to say earlier. We've just had the window frames delivered and just kind of peeled off a little bit so you can see up close. We've had it done as like a sash style. So these little bits added on so that far away, um, some of them have the Georgian divides as well um, in the glass. It looks like sash, it's like sash imitation, but it's UPVC. But not only that, rather than the standard white, we've gone for white ash, which is like a wood effect. You can kind of see there. And it's definitely like not a stark white. It's more of a slightly off-white creamier color. So yeah, really, really happy now that these have finally been delivered and we're gonna get them installed in a couple of days which i'm so excited for so new windows all of upstairs these ones are and yay this feels so good i cannot wait until we've got new windows put in from the outside you can see here what our current windows the state they're in single glazed all chipped and just need fully replacing so that is what the before is like so that is where we are at in terms of our renovation to date. This week we actually do have the garden being fully done, which is gonna be a big transformation. We are having so many of the shrubs and everything cut back, the bigger trees cut up so that we've got a bit more height there, the shed taking out, there's just a lot going on and hopefully, fingers crossed, we know what builders can be like, that uh, fingers crossed they are gonna be coming this week and hopefully it's just gonna be a day or two's job but like with a big team of people to get it done. And we've also, having had the deliveries of the windows, got the windows guy rebooked in for next week so fingers crossed the top two floors will have all brand new windows by then so yeah it might be sooner rather than later that i'm coming back to you with a, a new episode episode three so stay tuned for that if you're enjoying my renovation series then be sure to follow me over on my instagram homer account where i'm keeping you guys posted daily and also saving to my highlights each week by week hope you guys enjoyed thumbs up if you did subscribe for more and i will hope to see you again next time bye guys